Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a story of a man who found out his wife has been cheating on him with his friend. And this is what he finally did. Here's the full story with multiple updates. My 47 male ex-wife, 48 female, left me a year and a half ago for a guy who was married to her high school best friend. Some friend she turned out to be, right. We had been married 20 year and had what I though were two children together. I recently found out that my 6 years old daughter isn't mine. She's his. She knew this from day one of being pregnant and kept it from me. And it's my name on the birth certificate and I do intend to fight for custody as this has been my daughter, and the certificate is a legally binding document. She might not be blood, but that is my daughter. Clearly this affair has been going on for some time. Finding out was a kick in the teeth. When I asked her if it's him or me, she said it's him. Why? Because he can get it right back up after sex and go again. That's the only reason. Sex, forget the fact that I worked two jobs to put her through school and continued to do so she could stay home and raise our kids and cheat on me. I gave up pursuing my dreams and music career for her so that she could pursue hers and have a family. They have been the number one thing in my life. My ex has always been a cold woman. She's bipolar and life wasn't always easy. Her outbursts and physical and emotional abuse were soul crushing, but I endured it because I thought she couldn't help it. Turns out that wasn't entirely true. She admitted to friends that she often punched me because she felt like it or wasn't getting her way. My kids had witnessed on several occasions her striking and verbally abusing me and each time I took it without fighting back and hating my kids to witness this. At one point towards the end she was angry at me for not taking the trash out the moment I came home and grabbed me by the neck and started squeezing while my son stood horrified watching. I told her our son will always remember this, and she let me go. I should have left long ago. I know this now. I'd like to think that if not for my children, I would have. But I didn't want them to have a broken home and held on to the hope that someday my wife would go back to being the woman I fell in love with. I know now that those days are dead and gone and had been for years. After everything came to light, my wife sat down with her friend whose husband she was cheating with and told her point blank, yes it's true, no I'm not sorry. And then my wife got up and walked away. I was told this by her friend. My wife left, took the kids and moved in with him in an apartment behind the one we shared. Even then I held on to the hope that she would see the grass wasn't greener with him. He had cheated on his own wife several times besides with my wife and she knows this. I waited that entire first year waiting for her to come back. She kept the apartment keys and I assumed she was still holding on to them because she knew she would come home. But at the end of that year they began their cruelty again with him constantly dropping by the bus stop as I was putting the kids on the bus for school and telling me, I've come to see my daughter off to school, not your daughter, mine. I told him, then why were you so content for the past five years to let me raise her, her to have my last name, let me be there at her birth, and raise her as mine? Where were you? Why is my name on the certificate as her father instead of yours? That almost earned me a punch to the face and it did earn me to a drunken visit by the both of them at the end of the night because he showed up to fight. My ex then decided to make everything public, going on Facebook and bragging about her new boyfriend. Our friends were shocked and reached out to me and his wife about it. I made sure to grab all the screenshots I could. She doesn't seem to care about the hole she's dug for herself with our upcoming divorce. Then again why should she? I already got her with the paternity test. At the end, I became self-destructive. I kept wondering what could I've done differently or better. She blamed me for not being around for her but if I wasn't working two jobs, how could we've survived? I didn't clean when I got home because I was too tired. And she's screaming at me about trash when our kids have colored on all the walls, tore down blinds, put holes in the wall under her watch. But the not taking out the trash after working 16 hours was the problem. The worst part was that I wanted my family back so badly, I was believing it was my fault. It took a while to see the truth of it all. All that changed with my brother. He was determined to get me to play in his band and even though I declined, he insisted that I meet the other members and decide them. That changed everything for me. I still declined. But I struck up a friendship with them and ended up casually dating a friend that the rhythm guitarist introduced me to. I quickly fell in love with this woman, 45, and it was a relief to be in a loving relationship with someone that wasn't a 24-7 screaming match that usually ended with me getting hit. Now throughout this time, as I've stated, my ex still had the keys to our apartment. She would occasionally let herself in and drop off stuff for the kids. The first time she let herself in and my new girlfriend was there did not go well. She called me that night asking me who she was and why was she in our apartment. I enjoyed telling my ex that my GF was none of her business. She moved on and left me and was living with someone else. The last few months my ex has become erratic over my new GF 
and has even begun to stalk her. My ex had sent my GF a Facebook friend request and demanded my GF to accept it. When my GF refused, my ex called me screaming that I need to tell her to accept it because she needs to see the kind of person my GF is that I'm having our kids around. My GF grabbed the phone from me and told her that she does not need to add her as a friend. Anything involving communication about the kids can be done through messenger or through phone calls. That my ex does not and will not have access to our private life, friends, and family because she is not part of my girlfriend's personal life. This didn't set well with my ex. My girlfriend showed me the sudden burst of friend requests she got from people that had my ex as a friend. My ex then started letting herself into my place every weekend and when I wasn't home at work to snoop around. I was on the phone with my girlfriend who was staying with me while I was at work to hear my ex walk in, and my GF asked her if there was something she needed. My ex claimed she wanted to see how much milk I had in my fridge for when the kids came over. My GF told her we had it handled and my ex left. When I got home I demanded the apartment key since she's not living there. She then took my son's keys and made copies for herself. When my lease was up, my girlfriend asked me to move in with her so that we could distance ourselves from my ex. My ex did everything she could to hinder this, calling the police and telling them I was leaving with her belongings and when asked what was hers, she couldn't name anything in my place that was left that was hers. Now we get the kids every other weekend and I was told by my children that they are not allowed to talk about what they did with me because she doesn't want to hear it. That didn't last long. Now she pumps my kids for all the information she can get. I'm sure it's jealousy. We live on the beach. My GF is very well off and when we get the kids we take a short walk to the boardwalk to ride rides, let them play on the beach, or visit the aquarium. If they return home with prizes my ex throws them away. Now the issue with my ex was the last few times she dropped off my kids. I noticed she now dresses and looks very similar to my GF. She dyed her hair and cut it to match her. Whatever we do with the kids, my ex runs out the following week and tries to do the same thing with them. If we got to the beach, she takes them to the beach. If we go to the zoo, she takes them to the zoo. If she finds out what we had with them for dinner she has to make the same thing, and demands our kids to tell her whose they liked more. Last week my son asked to live with us because he said my ex was crazy. You better believe I'm using all this in court. Just when I didn't think things could get any crazier with her, the other night she starts texting me bears. What the hell? My GF was sitting next to me when they started coming in and I immediately got defensive and told my GF I didn't ask for them, and that my ex and I aren't talking like that. I offered her my phone to go through to see for myself. My GF looked at the pictures and asked for my ex's number so she could text my ex her own bears back so that she could show her how it's done. I called my ex and asked her what the hell she was doing. I told her that my GF was sitting next to me and saw the messages and is pissed. My ex tried saying she meant to send them to someone else. My GF said to her that my name was on one end of the alphabet while her boyfriend was on the other. Then she asked her who's the new guy since it was meant for someone else. My ex hung up. I really don't know what game my ex is playing. This is all just crazy to me. Let me clear up a few things. Because the comments keep coming back that as if I'm still living there. 1. My GF did not send her bears in return. That was just her verbal response to what my ex had done saying that she should to show her how it's done. Because the pictures were of my ex with her shirt off making duck faces at a mirror with her phone in her hand. My girlfriend simply made a joke in regards to my ex's lack of imagination. 2. I do not live in my old apartment that I shared with my wife anymore. I have moved in with my girlfriend because despite me taking the keys back from my ex, she took my son's keys and used those to keep breaking in. She does not have access to my new place and my kids don't even have keys for this reason. 3. I'm currently fighting for custody of my kids and it's not easy with me not being the biological father of my daughter. But I'm fighting based on the birth certificate having me listed as the father which gives me parental rights to my daughter. 4. My ex was prescribed meds but I'm having serious doubts if she's taken them. 5. I check my kids for bruises and make sure they are not being abused but she made the mistake of getting physical on her boyfriend and he punched a hole in the wall and let her know if she raises a fist on him again. He's fighting back. Edit. I'm currently fighting for custody of my kids. It's not an easy fight when biologically one isn't yours. That is a hard battle I'm fighting. Where was I? I was for the longest time hoping she would come back with my kids because I wasn't the one giving up on my family. I didn't recognize her behaviors for what they were until I was outside the box looking in. She had a way of bending and shifting blame and finding ways to make it my fault to the point I thought that it was me. 
once you're free from the clutches of a sociopathic narcissist you finally start seeing the forest for the trees. As much as I want to go scorched earth, the best thing for me to do is be the reasonable one. That's what's best for my kids. That I fight this calmly and calculated. That I get my life in order so that when we do go to court for custody, I have my crap in order and all the evidence situated. You don't fight these things like a bull in a china shop. That's how you lose. It's chess. Every move has a counter. Not my first post here but wanted to vent about something that has me baffled. So through a paternity test my daughter is not my daughter but the child of my ex-friend who is now residing with my ex. This past weekend was my daughter's official 6 year old birthday. It was not my weekend to get the kids and as a shock, my ex asked me if I wanted the kids for my daughter's birthday. Of course I took them. I was even granted them an extra two days. I figure they had some plans and were pawning the kids on me so they could go do whatever. But the thing that strikes me is that this is the first time that he can celebrate his daughter's birthday, and instead of doing something special as her father, she's given to me and my girlfriend. Anyone else think this a tad effed up? Edit. Interesting. Are you still considered her legal father and do you pay child support? Also, if you haven't already consider using a co-parenting app with the ex so that incidences like this can be logged. You may want to revisit custody as the child ages if this sort of behavior continues. I'm glad to hear that you are in another relationship. Any plans for marriage or children? I am. It is my name on the birth certificate. Which alone is another crap thing my ex did. She knew I wasn't the father and had me believing I was. A birth certificate is just as binding as adoption papers, so I am still considered her father and currently fighting for custody. As for the new relationship, marriage could be a future possibility. She is definitely more grounded and set in her morals than my ex and has made my children her top priority. My kids love and bonded with her and my son has taken to opening up to her more than me or my ex. I was a little upset about it at first, but I get it. She's not a parent and can provide a response to him that is more focused on him and not making him feel like he's in a parental tug of war. I'm glad he has that. As for us having children, she's unable to have any. Wait, does the girl know? She's only six. What does she call you? What does she call him? Where does all of that stand? And here's where it gets nasty. My daughter does not. At the moment she thinks she has two daddies, me and him. She calls us daddy, his name, and daddy, my name. My 12 year old son on the other hand. She decided he needed to know. Why? I don't know. I really don't know why she dumped that on him. And I don't think she thought that through because her telling him has put a rift between them. My son hates her. My son and him clash greatly as my son seems him as the reason all our lives got destroyed. As I was saying in another comment, my son doesn't really talk either of us about his feelings. His mother has let it be known that she doesn't give a damn as he reported the AP threatening to hit him and she told him so what do you want me to do about it? And he's afraid of telling me because I'm angry about everything involving my ex and the AP. But my son talks and seeks the advice of my girlfriend. I believed she was my daughter until my ex told me she was leaving me for my friend and informed me that my daughter might be his. So for five years of this child's life I was her father. My daughter just turned six, so for all this time I was her father. I raised her. I cut the cord. I took care of her. My name is on the birth certificate which legally binds her to me as her father. I was there. Not him. You don't turn your back on your kids. Just an update but I have to shake my head at this. Saturday night I received an angry text from my ex saying that she hopes I'm effing happy that I won. I know I shouldn't have engaged in the conversation but I asked what her problem was. She answered with a response that made no sense and then proceeded to tell me to go ahead and gloat. Gloat times 10 because something happened to her and then she proceeded to accuse me of being in on it. I asked what I'm supposedly in on. Instead of a direct answer she went off on me about how all men are pigs and can't be trusted. From this I gathered two things. 1. She's drunk off her crap again. 2. The idiot she left me for cheated on her. I didn't say anything. When she's like that, any response is a fight and I chose to not get into it. I just read the texts and thought that she got exactly what was coming to her. She left me for my friend who was married and had cheated on his wife three times with her being number three. And when I brought this up as she was leaving me, she told me, I know what I'm getting into. I guess she thought she was the end all to his wayward ways. When she ran out of insults to fling at me, she shifted her attack to my girlfriend, telling me she's ugly as f and I could have had any girl but I chose someone ugly to replace her with. My girlfriend is stunning both inside and out. My ex is also extremely jealous of my new girlfriend and as I've mentioned in older posts, my ex had taken to stalking my girlfriend and trying to change her appearance to look like her. 
the attack continued with my ex telling me that I don't love my new girlfriend and it's impossible for me to fall in love with the first woman I effed after losing her. My ex and I had been apart a year when I met my now girlfriend. It took some time for me to feel comfortable trusting someone again. And that trust was earned and not given easily. She then followed up by claiming that I only love her because I lost my apartment and I'm kissing my girlfriend's crap for a place to live. As she so interestingly put it, it's only love when you're homeless. I had my own apartment across the street from my ex-wife because she decided to stay in the complex to flaunt the fact she left me for my friend in my face every waking minute. When my lease was up, I decided to move in with my girlfriend and relocate my job there. I know she was trying to provoke a fight, I just wasn't giving it to her. When I thought my ex's attacks couldn't get any more stupid and childish, she proceeded to tell me that she's sorry she wasn't enough for me. I wanted so badly to call her at that moment and scream it was me that wasn't good enough for her. She left me or did she effing forget which of us walked out the door and which of us walked out the door replacing the other with someone else. She left me for a married guy that had cheated repeatedly on his wife. Real effing winner there. She then went on the attack on my girlfriend again saying that we both know that she, my ex, was who I wanted to be with. That my GF couldn't compete or hold a candle to her. At that point I had enough and asked her to contact me when she's better and sober and turned my phone off. Hours later when my GF came home she asked me what was wrong. I warned her that she was going to get mad and I handed her my phone and told her to read it for herself. She read it and just laughed her crap off and handed me back my phone and said looks like he cheated. I said it seemed that way and proceeded to try to reassure her thinking the ugly comments might make her question me. They didn't even phase her. She told me that my ex's narcissist ways really come out full blown when she's drunk and bet that my ex was upset that she couldn't come to me for a revenge F to get back at him. I have yet to hear anything else from my ex. My guess is as usual the next day she looked back at those texts and saw what she did and feels stupid. I'm also betting she's back with him because she can't stand to be alone. Edit. 20 years of her abuse was a long lasting effect that I'm trying to work through. No matter what I did, I was wrong. When I was right, I was wrong for disagreeing with her and trying to make her feel stupid. I see now that's a narcissistic guilt trip. A lot of it is subconscious and I'm not even aware that I'm walking on eggshells. If my phone goes off I instinctively say who it is and show my girlfriend the phone which is what I did in the past to avoid fights and accusations. I don't have to do that anymore but it's a hard habit to break. When I do it my GF usually doesn't even look but says you're doing it again. And that's the messed up part. If she doesn't look I feel like she didn't verify that I'm telling her the truth and I feel like it might open me up to an attack later. I know that it won't. But it's going to be a tough cycle to break. There's so much internal crap that I'm unraveling. Eventually I'll get there. But that's the hardest part isn't it? Recovering from all of it. Not just the cheating. But unconditioning the controls that were used on you. Just when you think you got it back. You get into a new relationship and the floodgates open and you find yourself doing what you did in your last relationship to not make waves in the new one instead of just being you. It really is a long road to recovery. As of my last update, my ex got cheated on by the guy she left me for. As predicted, they got back together three days later. I expected that. She has no one to fall back on and now she's stuck with him. For the most part, ever since that last incident, I haven't heard anything from her outside signing a few documents for our divorce and communications about the kids, and I'm thankful for that. But I know it won't last before she gets drunk and I get sent another drunken you're the ultimate crap off rant. Halloween. My band was asked to perform at an event one of my friends sets up every year. I've been doing it for a few years and it's a tradition. My ex used to attend with me. She didn't last year because that's the year I found out that she was sleeping with my best friend and that my now six-year-old daughter was actually his. She wasn't invited, but she showed up anyway with her boyfriend that she left me for and who cheated on her and my kids. I was furious. Kids are not welcomed at these parties as they are adult only, and she knows this and I strongly believe that she showed up with them in an attempt to get me thrown out. Security kept telling her she couldn't come in, and she stood there fighting saying that the kids wanted to see their father play. I've got security telling me that I need to get them out of there, and her screaming at me that I'm putting a party over my kids. My friend who was throwing the party came down and told her she could stay and watch me do two songs, but then she would have to leave and if she refused, he's calling the police. I told my friend not to cater to her, and he told me he was only doing it for my kids. It wasn't a good night. I was on stage and I wasn't privy to what was happening around the party. But I was clued in on it when I went between sets. Some of what I found out was that my ex tried clashing with my girlfriend and that didn't end well for her. 
IGF put her in her place and called her out on using our kids to play games. This was witnessed by many people and when I walked off stage, I had several people telling me and pointing to where they were. When I got there, whatever fight there had been was over and my ex was staring daggers at my GF from far across the room. My daughter humiliated my ex by loudly telling everyone there that she has two daddies, me and her mommy's boyfriend who is actually her real daddy. That further humiliated my ex, as she said thanks for making me sound like trash and she ended up leaving after that. But my son refused to go with her and fought to stay with me. My ex had her BF find my GF to ask if we could keep him and she agreed and worked it out with my friend to keep my son glued to her side for the rest of the party, and we took him home the following night. My nerves were shot to hell the whole night. I must have apologized to my friend, GF, and son a thousand times that night for putting them all in the middle of it. I messed up every song because I kept searching the crowd to see where they were and what was happening, worrying that a physical fight would break out between them. I didn't know until after I was off stage that she had took off and left my son behind. When I took my son home the next night, she made it a point to not be there. I was told by her boyfriend that she knew I was coming to drop my son off and she wanted to avoid a confrontation about what had happened. He apologized to me about it all and tried talking to me about her and how she's been acting. I told him I'm not getting into it with him and I left. I get a phone call later that night from my son that they're fighting badly over me. Her boyfriend got tired of the crap she's been pulling and accused her of not being over me. He apparently asked her what is it that bothers her most, that I moved on and she can't crawl back to me. Or is it that if she hadn't have left me when she did for him, that I would have eventually left her for my GF? According to my son, that was what started it. I could hear them screaming in the background and asked him if he needed me to come get him. He told me no. I talked to him until it died down. So that's just what's going on with me right now. Still going through the divorce. Still moving forward. I just no longer look back at what I lost. I just need to get my kids out of there. And yes, I'm still fighting to do that. Edit, problems for life. No, once the youngest turns 18 then that ends any co-parenting between me and her. I think her relationship with the other guy will last a while because they both cheat. Do I still have feelings? F no, I did it first but in the months and last two years we've been apart. I'm seeing the picture crystal clear and she is not what I could ever want. Now that I see who she really is, I could never and would never go back to that. She has tried breaking me and my GF up already and that didn't end well for her. My girlfriend has her boundaries in place and refuses to entertain my ex in any way. I've already seen my ex lose it in frustration at not being able to get under my GF's skin. But no, there's no more feelings there for my ex. A person can become so crappy that they taint every memory, even the good ones. My six years old daughter was going on and on about her elf at soon to be ex-wife's house, so my GF bought one for hours and set it up thinking my daughter would be excited to see the elf, sent a friend to watch her when she was here. My daughter's reaction was alarming to say the least. The moment my daughter laid eyes on the elf, she became furious. She instantly started screaming at it that it needs to leave or she's going to tell Santa that it's bad and tells lies. She went into a tantrum to top all tantrums screaming for it to go or else she's telling. My girlfriend tried calming her by telling her it's not going to lie. If she's good, he'll tell Santa she's good. But if she's bad, he'll tell Santa. He's not going to lie so all she has to do is be good. My daughter bared her teeth and gave my GF a look to slaughter and growled he's going to tell on me. What the hell? I had so much going through my head at that moment. Why is she afraid of this one and not her mother's? How many lies is she yelling at home that my ex is just ignoring? How much else is my ex ignoring? Now I've had issues with my daughter lying. She likes to make claims that her brother hits her when he's not even anywhere around her, and we've been working to curb that. I brought that up to my soon-to-be ex-wife and her response is she's aware of it and handling it. Now today, when I drop my kids off, I plan to confront her about what happened with the elf, because something tells me that something seriously wrong is going on there. I don't feel like I'm looking too deep into it. I want to get her into therapy because it's becoming clear that there's a lot more than what I'm aware of going on there. Something is wrong over there. That's for damn sure. Edit. I already know at her mom's. She's the princess because the real father is there and she can do no wrong. I also know he gives my son hell because he's mine. My GF and I talked to the kids today about the behaviors. We asked my son if my daughter does this crap at home lying and trying to get everyone in trouble. He said not as much, which left us wondering why she does it here. Asking my daughter why she lies about her brother, she got defensive and says he does hit her. That he just did. When asked when that happened, she said just a minute ago. He wasn't even in the house. He was taking the trash out and hadn't been near her all day long. He avoids her because of the lying. 
When pointed out she was lying she got angry and raised her fist to my GF and threatened her. I took away her TV and video games and asked her why she misbehaves and doesn't be good. She looked at me and growled because I don't want to. Looks like I gotta step up the discipline because I'm not having this crap. So it would seem my daughters freak out over the elf on the shelf unleashed a flood of bigger problems. I investigated why she had such a reaction to it and I fell down a pretty deep rabbit hole of problems I didn't even know I had. To recap, over the weekend my GF and I got my daughter an elf on the shelf, since she kept talking about how much she loved the one at my cheating soon-to-be ex-wife's house. Upon seeing the elf, my daughter became irate towards the elf, screaming it has to go because it's going to tell Santa on her. This posed the question on why the one at her mother's was great, but ours was an issue. So I asked and got no answers. We went to dinner with my GF's ex-stepmother. My GF's father cheated on her and my GF sided with her stepmother and remained family with her, despite her father's divorce. This does wonders for my trust issues from my soon-to-be ex-wife as I know where my GF's moral compass stands because of this relationship with her ex-stepmother. During this dinner, the stepmother made a brief mention of an abuse my GF suffered at the hands of her stepfather on her mother's side. My son visibly reacted to it, but said nothing at the time. On the way to take them home, he opened the floodgates about what had been going on at home. I got to say, I didn't see that one coming. It would seem the ex-wife of my soon-to-be ex-wife's boyfriend has been handling the affair between her husband and my wife with vengeance and extreme hostility. She wants blood and she's doing everything she can to make their lives a living hell by any means necessary, including using her kids to attack my son because he's the son of the woman who took away her husband. These kids in turn, think it funny to teach their half-sister, my daughter who is really his daughter, to attack my son too. When I asked my daughter, she said it's a game. When I told her it's not fair to her brother and it's mean and not a game, she started crying that I didn't want her to have any fun and started her tantrum. I told her it's going to stop, she rolled her eyes and told me, but I don't want to. It's fun. What the F? I informed her that punishments would be forthcoming if it continues and I'm not tolerating it anymore. Mistreat your brother and I'm taking away everything. No TV. No toys. No video games. Everything. That earned me another meltdown but I'm not having it. When I dropped my kids off, I asked my ex what the hell was going on and I confronted her with what I was told. She told me, the OBS has been doing all in her power to make their lives hell. The OBS knows their side schedules for their side jobs and has been sabotaging it which has been affecting them financially. And she told me Christmas was going to be ugly on their end because of it. I told her about his kids being coached to abuse our son and training our daughter to partake in it. And she hit me with there's only so much I can do. And she can't watch them all the time. I told her if she's aware of it. Do something about it because it's a problem when the crap going on here spills into my house. I know she's not doing a damn thing about it. That none of the kids are being disciplined because my daughter thinks it's okay to act up at my place and still learning that actions have consequences. Learning, which I have to reteach her every other weekend because I don't have her enough to drive that point home. So every other week it's back to square one. Which now explains why she fears our elf and not the one at home. Nothing's being done. So now I got a new problem. The OBS is making it hell on all of us. Yeah, I'm bringing this up in court that my kids are being abused by the AP's kids because of this. You better believe I'm bringing this up. Edit, I'm going for custody for both my kids. Not that I wasn't before, but this just gives me a little more to work with now that I know more of what's going on in that household. In a way it does explain the elf. My daughter doesn't fear the elf there because there's no repercussions for her actions there. She's allowed to misbehave and no one is doing a damn thing about anything any of these kids are doing. She was afraid of my elf because she knows she gets in trouble at my place. I always had the suspicion that my ex wasn't doing anything about my kid's behavior on her end. This confirms it. The way my daughter reacted, what my son said, and what she herself said about it. There's only so much I can do. You can do plenty. Since she doesn't want to handle it, it's up to me. I'm using this in court. It was today that it officially ended. That we sat on the Zoom court call and ended it all. I went through it in a haze because I thought of this day a million times over the last year, and here I was and it was happening. It took five minutes to end. Only five. Neither of us were contesting it. She wasn't asking for anything. Not that she could. Paternity test let me know what was what. Just a couple quick questions that were mostly not asked of me. I was asked if there was a chance to save the marriage. No. I was asked if I wanted to proceed with the divorce today. Yes, it amused me how they asked her if there were any domestic issues or abuse and she said no. I wasn't asked that at all. I found that interesting. 
I got hit plenty. It wasn't even an issue. I guess in the end that didn't matter because the end would be the same. It's over. All that's left is family court for custody of the kids and with what's going on right now, it's leaning more and more in my favor. She waited exactly five minutes from the end of court to post it all over Facebook. I know this because my phone blew up with screenshots from my friends telling me about it. She made mention about how divorce is hard but we need to set a good example for our kids. She even tagged me which was a mistake. My friends got on her about how it would set a better example for the kids by not immediately going to social media for attention and likes. I guess I can't say crap about that. I'm here telling a bunch of strangers. But I waited several hours and none of you personally know me. But it's over and I'm not entirely sure how I should be feeling. I feel blank. It's been a while since I've said anything and I thank everyone for reaching out to me. I've just been in a mood with everything going on and not up for updating. My divorce was finalized last month so that is one obstacle down. For the most part it was a good Christmas with the exception of my ex losing her job and the AP she moved in with her is not making enough to make ends meet and came to me for help with the kids. I wanted to tell her to kick rocks since she waited three days before Christmas to tell me and me and my GF went scrambling to find suitable gifts with stores picked clean. Before anyone tells me I shouldn't have done a thing and let my kids see her for the trash she really is, I wanted to. I almost did. But I can't do that to my kids on Christmas and I told her this is a one-time help. I won't help her again. When she came to get the presents she asked to come in to see where the kids slept. When I said that isn't a good idea, she told me it wasn't a request and that she needed to and it was her right to. When she tried stepping around me, my GF was in her face telling her that she's not stepping foot in her house and if she's got some concerns, make some calls. But she, my ex, will never be allowed in her, my GF's house. My ex backed down. And I spent the rest of the night calming down my GF from wanting to tear the face off my ex. The best way I can explain this, my GF has my ex completely locked out. My ex tries, fails miserably, and screams to whoever will listen that it's unfair she's cut out when the kids are with me. Our life is none of her business and doesn't involve her. And my GF has made it loud and clear, my ex has no place in our lives. Maybe I'm an idiot for this, but I let my girlfriend take the reins in this situation. She's immune to my ex and better at calling out the crap than I am. Where my ex will challenge me and try manipulating me to bend, my girlfriend is an unmovable rock. My ex hasn't tried playing any games since then. I got my kids in therapy. Things have escalated with them. We put a camera in the living room which has been catching a lot of my daughter's lies. A lot of her punching my son and screaming that he hit her when he didn't. We've confronted her on it and she's starting to learn that the lies aren't working here. My son is frustrated at how long court is taking and is having issues not being able to live with me full time yet. He's very bonded to my girlfriend. So I have no worries there. They don't clash heads. That's a relief. But he's acting out at his mother's, he's screaming, punching walls, and arguing. I know he wants out of there and I'm doing what I can to make that happen. I know it will happen. All that aside, I have a new problem with my girlfriend's ex-boyfriend suddenly stalking her, which hilariously was brought to my attention by a different ex-boyfriend of hers, my bandmate who was the one who introduced me to her. This guy went crazy the other night at being told by the other ex that she's happy, she's moved on, and he needs to let go and find someone new. His response to that was crash his car into a guardrail trying to slaughter himself. So much crazy in my life, I don't know if I should laugh, cry, or sell tickets. So that's what's new with me. D-Day was over two years ago. Divorce was finalized four months ago. She's still with AP and I've moved on a year ago. For the most part, my life is so much better without her. Here it is two years later and I'm still finding stuff out. There was another friend of mine that she slept with before the AP. I wish I could say that didn't sting a little. But it did. It just increased the timeline for how long I was a fool. So I missed the signs twice. I know my daughter isn't mine. Now I'm wondering if my son is. He doesn't look like me. None of his features are mine. Not all his features are hers either. As much as I wonder, I wonder also if I really want to know. I don't think I can take that blow a second time. Ignorance is bliss, right? I try to put as much of her behind me as possible. It's difficult when kids are involved because I'm stuck co-parenting until they're 18. I tried to go without Grey Rock, thinking we could be amicable. I wanted to show the kids that we could come together for them. Interesting how the guilty ones are always on the attack and constantly trying to blame shift even after all is said and done. Even more interesting how she thought she could still control me and call all the shots. When I didn't give in she still lashed out and attacked. She tried her tactics on my GF and long story short, she's learned to stay clear of her. 
My GF is a force to be reckoned with and dealing with sociopathic narcissist isn't her first rodeo. I know that in the end, I came out on top. I have a new life, new job, new home, new love. I'm doing far better than my ex who is dealing with the repercussions of her actions. Not only did my ex destroy our life together, she ruined APs too and his ex-wife is going above and beyond to make their lives a living hell. And sad to say this affects my kids as their lives there are turned upside down by that crap show. The AP's wife is the poster child for hell hath no fury. She hit them hard financially and my ex has come to me crying poor mouth a few times already. She lost her job six months ago and has yet to find work, choosing to live off her AP who is getting squeezed dry by his ex. I don't feel bad about that at all, I just hate what it's putting my kids through. I do what I can for my kids, but for my kids only. I won't give money, but I will take over what they need. I'm not giving her the chance to go drinking with my money because that's who she is and part of the reason she was fired. Yes, I'm working on fighting for custody for my kids, even the one that isn't mine. I need to get them away from her. My son has developed a deep resentment towards his mother. Her fault, she's the one who told him why we were divorcing. He knows his sister is the APs and he makes sure everyone knows it. He told my GF before I could. I was trying to not dump all my issues on her. As a newly divorcing father, I already had a lot of baggage and didn't want to overwhelm her. But my son is angry. On the bright side, his bond with my GF is iron tight. That's his best friend. My daughter has her mother. She lies. She's manipulative. She pulls the same tactics and reacts the same way when things don't go her way. She's learned from the best. The cameras up in the house have been very useful at catching her in her lies. She likes to accuse people of being mean to her and loves accusing my son of hitting her. The cameras show her running up, hitting him, and screaming that he hit her. After we confronted her and showed her the video, she had a meltdown at being caught. Since then, she stopped accusing him of hitting her. Now we're catching her sneaking into things she's not supposed to, and playing one side against the other saying that someone said she could have something when they didn't. And that's another thing. The cameras are up for my benefit under the guise of home security but that's not all I'm using them for. If my daughter falls and gets a bruise, my ex is screaming child abuse. She has tried accusing my girlfriend of hurting my kids. The reality of it is that my daughter decided to dive off the couch trying to make it to the chair because the floor was lava. So there I am, sending my ex the video showing what happened and us addressing the injury as it happened. That only went on for a few weeks before my ex finally got the picture that no one is hurting the kids and we have proof for every bump and scratch. I know, it sucks taking it to that level that I put up cameras, but I did. It brings me a peace of mind knowing my ex can't play that game against me. It also brings me a huge peace of mind when I'm at work and my GF is home alone, and I can check in to see what she's up to. Reading a book, watching a movie, or playing video games online with my son or her little brother who is the same age as my son. Having the cameras helps me with my trust issues. It's been a while since I've been here, since I've commented, shared, and participated. My story has certainly been a wild one. Three years ago my ex-wife left me for my married best friend and tore two families apart. Two years ago, I thought I was ready to move on and ended up dragging my GF into my personal hell, and ended up putting her into situations and drama that you don't want to drag anyone into. Clashings with my ex, issues with my kids, and the wife of my ex-best friend using her kids to come after mine. I ended up dropping my girlfriend into my nightmare battleground and she took on a lot of fire. You can't just move on, start over, put it all behind you and be happy. That's the biggest lie you can tell yourself. The truth is, once you find new love, you have to fight for it. Ex-jealousy doesn't matter if they left you or you left them. They're going to get jealous and petty, kids competing for attention, mutual friends stirring the pots, and if there are two families involved in the infidelity, that's double the drama. There's a lot that you do and you don't see coming. We survived, thankfully, my girlfriend and I. I still feel guilty about it, because I didn't feel like me or my baggage was worth holding on to. My ex issues cost both me and my GF a lot. It would have been so much easier to say none of this was her problem and walk away. I wouldn't have blamed her. And every time something new would happen, I found myself bracing for it because no one should have to go through all that she did. Luckily for me, she's stubborn and doesn't quit easily. It took a while for things to calm down to the point that they are now. That required my ex to lose a lot of battles. And she still plays her games here and there. But nothing on a catastrophic level anymore. That involved taking a lot of actions to minimalize her attempts. Cameras. I can't stress that enough. Get cameras in your home. 
My kids are clumsy. One trip on the rug resulting in a bruise on my daughter's chin and my ex was screaming child abuse to all who would listen. Facebook posts of the injury saying how I was frustrated and struck my daughter. And people coming for my throat until I posted the video clip of my daughter tripping on the rug and me immediately picking her up and taking care of the injury. Needless to say the child abuse post came down quick and the phone calls and texts from my ex asking me to remove the video started just as fast. I left them. Naturally I took a screenshot of her post first before posting the video, and someone else was nice enough to do the same and post the screenshot in the comments section. That ended that. Having cameras, having my ex know that I have cameras in the house, ended a lot of her accusations. No one is hurting my kids. It also gave me a lot of peace of mind with my girlfriend especially with the I saw her bring some guy into your house while you were at work Friday night. That's weird. I saw her on camera, playing Call of Duty with her brothers alone. As I said, it's been three years since D-Day and the divorce. Two years since I moved on with someone else. My ex is still with her affair partner. And I recently asked my girlfriend to marry me and we are now planning for that. My kids are getting along better. My daughter stopped her lying. Cameras are great for that too. And there are still some issues, but nothing as bad as before. I look forward to getting remarried. I believe that I now am with the right one. Edit. AP's kids don't mess with my kids as much anymore. On that end, my ex and AP are battling his ex in court and trying to get custody of his kids since his ex-wife is psychologically abusing them. That his ex makes my ex look like a walk in the park. My daughter has stopped with her lying and physical attacks on my son. The cameras helped a lot with that. We showed her that we saw what she did and grounded her. Only took her a couple of days of getting into trouble and being caught for her to realize she can't get away with it anymore. As far as I'm concerned both kids are mine and I'm keeping on as such. My ex does continue to do her damage on the relationship with the kids and my son is spending more and more time with me than at home with his mom. I went from seeing him every other weekend to having him every weekend. I believe the time is coming where he's going to make his choice before the courts get off their craps to do it. His relationship with my fiancé is great, and I do get jealous when he goes to her for things before coming to me. But I understand it and I'm glad they have that bond. My daughter isn't the holy terror she was. She knows she can't get away with things with me and doesn't even try. My ex has reported that her and my daughter have issues, and my daughter has developed an attitude with her. I want so much to tell her have you actually tried parenting? You'd be amazed what happens when you actually try raising a child instead of dropping a tablet in front of them and letting YouTube raise them for you, or passing them off on everyone else so you can go out and party. OP, your former partner is indeed quite unpleasant. It's astonishing she remains with the unfaithful person though. Your ex has faced consequences a few times, but I doubt she will transform without significant counseling. Your girlfriend has been a steadfast support for you. I respect how you and your recent companion have navigated through such a chaotic situation. I wish for ongoing improvement in your circumstances. Good luck and stay strong. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like my videos then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.